I noticed that he was fumbling around by his shorts, his waistband area. And when that happened, I drew my pistol. I wasn't going to take any chances. Immediately, he started letting off shots. When that happened, I secured myself around this other part of the building. So I emptied one magazine, put another mag in. At some point in between all that, after them driving off, I recognized that I got hit. Blackout coffee, ladies and gentlemen. Which one do you want? Which one do you like more? Pick. Bless you. Which one? Which one do you want? Brutal Awakening or Morning Reaper? Oh, all right, that's the one he wants. As you can see, Sarge's favorite is Brutal Awakening. Obviously need to get more Brutal Awakening, but we've got Morning Reaper. We're gonna make some right now. I'm gonna show y'all how I make my coffee. So guys, I just put some beans in, enough for a few cups. Grind it up. Boom. Open this deal up, and there's a bean in Sarge's bowl. Fill it up. Filtered water, folks. Let me tell you, if you have acidity problems with coffee, make sure that you've got filtered water. And then, boom, done. Now guys, when you go to reorder, go to their best seller tab. They got flavored coffee, which we're gonna show as well. You can get a badass shirt and a mug as well. Y'all know that Blackout is the official coffee of HTC, so join the family. Discount code below the video. We're gonna take care of y'all. Everyone, welcome back. We've got a great show for y'all today. For some of you who have followed me ever since kind of the beginning of Heavy Duty Country, You've probably seen Dustin from time to time. Excuse me for one minute, please. All right, that's fine. Okay. <gasps> I'm happy to say that he is now officially a part of Heavy Duty Country. You're gonna be seeing him a lot more. And I ended up hiring him after a situation that he was in very recently. And I wanted us to share it with y'all because it just teaches a very good lesson and it's kind of some real world experience as far as what we talk about on this channel. So Dustin, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, thank you. So without further ado, Dustin has been working private security for a while now. He's very good at what he does and there are obviously certain parts of private security that are private, meaning that we're not gonna be able to share everything on here. But I wanna say that this story is a perfect example of why I talk about security cameras. If you're ever in a self-defense situation, if you're ever in a situation that calls for evidence, meaning you or your attorney has to somewhat explain themselves, whether it's for them to decide if they're gonna charge you or if it's in court. Now at the location that Dustin was hired to guard, no cameras. In fact, the only cameras that they had were inside the buildings. So that's great and all if somebody breaks into your house, but they're already in there, right? It's not stopping anyone from even thinking about going in. And for people who have studied or know about casing, when someone's looking at where they're gonna go rob or where they're gonna go do a home invasion at. Little stuff like that matters, right? Security cameras, warning dog signs. Little stuff like that will fend off a lot of people. So I'm just gonna kind of explain the story and we're gonna ask Dustin some questions in the middle of all of this and just kind of go from there. Like I said, he was hired to guard a location. His task was to drive around, get out occasionally, check if everything's good. And on this particular day, there were a bunch of robbers that decided to make it their day to rob this place. Now, how many guys were there? Well, at least four. And they were all in a truck, right? Yeah. So how did it start? So were you in your truck or were you outside? I was on foot patrol at the time. Okay, so you were on foot patrol and you were just walking around a building or? Yes, I was walking around a building. So I, I pulled up back on site and um, I ended up getting out of my truck to do foot patrol every now and again. I did that and the post was just driving around. Did they give you a time frame as far as how they wanted it or did they just kind of say you're experienced? It was kind of just more of like how I felt and how I kind of scheduled out my night. Okay. So every now and again, I would I would leave this area to go um, secure another area, and I came back. When I came back, they were there. Okay. So they were already in the act. So you shine your light at them. Were they in their truck or were they outside? They were. At they this were. Point? At, they were outside at this point. Okay. And then once. Did you say anything to them? Absolutely. I told them. I, I said, identify yourself and show me your hands. Got it. 
not supposed to be there, private property. Right. Um, that happened, and they all got in their truck except for one on the uh, backseat passenger side. And when that happened, I noticed that he was fumbling around by his shorts, his waistband area. And when that happened, I drew my pistol. I wasn't going to take any chances. Immediately, he started letting off shots. When that happened, I secured myself around this other part of the building. So once I heard him stop firing, I took a peek and it looked like he was fumbling with his gun. So I assumed that it was jammed whenever you're shooting a pistol and you have a weak grip and you're shooting it like a like right. a gangbanger, it will right. jam you. So I emptied one magazine, put another mag in. At some point in between all that, after them driving off, I recognized that I got hit. Had a big old bruise for a couple weeks. Okay, so I got hit in my chest, as you can see. We're trying to figure out what caliber it was. It's a decent hole, but luckily he was wearing this. Very yeah. important reason why you should have body armor. Yes, if you're doing any sort of security, even if it's not armed security, I suggest that you wear body armor. You never know. Well, I agree with that statement as far as private security and just security in general, but also if you know that you're going into a situation that's a little bit sketchy, Personally, I try to avoid those at all costs. I really don't even go to bars anymore. I used to be a huge bar guy. I don't do that anymore because simply just calling for something bad to happen. But if you know that you're going to possibly be in a situation or you're just going somewhere sketchy, it does not hurt to have some sort of body armor. And of course, having um, a firearm on me uh, definitely saved my life. Had I not had that on me, I think that he would have kept shooting. So I think that's a good point as far as the meeting force with equal force, right? So yes. I think that's what a lot of people who want gun control don't understand. So if somebody's shooting at you like they were mm -hmm. and you pull a taser out or you pull some pepper spray out. Yeah. Yes, that is technically a weapon, but it's kind of like the U.S. Army and all the stuff that we have going up against a group of kids with Nerf guns. Yeah. If you do not have equal force or more force in a self-defense situation, you're screwed. There's no reason. Now, y'all know that USCCA no is a stop, big sponsor so of this channel. Back, Did you have a USCCA membership left, right? when this exactly. whole thing went down? You're no, I went the opposition. Somehow. So let me ask you this. After the whole thing went down, what is the first thing that you did? Uh, I called law enforcement okay. immediately. The first thing that I thought of while waiting for law enforcement is how is this going to go down legally? Isn't that a weird thought process? Somebody is shooting at him. He has to defend himself. And one of the first thoughts is, is how does this look? Not... Oh, thank God I had body armor. Thank God I'm not shot. Thank God I'm, you know, alive. It's, well, how are the police going to look at this? Isn't that just so backwards? But that's the world that we live in today. So in this situation, if you had some sort of response team or someone you could call, explain the situation before the cops got there, that's going to give you sound advice as far as either what to say or to not say anything. Yeah, I'd have been a lot more comfortable had I known from any sort of legal team that were to give me some sort of proper information legally. So situations like these are the exact reason why we have USCCA on the channel. If y'all want a membership, there's going to be a link below the video. So I wanted to ask you, dude, how did you deal with it mentally afterwards? And is the stress of, I guess, the political environment that we're currently in, maybe they look at it a certain way and say, oh no, like this guy just tried to shoot these people or some crap that DAs usually come up with nowadays. Yeah, it's stressful. It's stressful to um, think that maybe I'm one of those guys who was just trigger happy and whatnot. But I mean, I knew the truth and I had a good support system behind me afterwards. So mentally, it was it was pretty tough at first, but I've I've definitely grown comfortable understanding and knowing my truth yep. and that I have people to back me. Well, absolutely crazy story. I'm glad that you are no longer working for that company. Yeah. <laughs> can't can't promise you're not gonna get into a shootout with right. me, but at least you got another guy behind you now. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate that. Obviously a pretty crazy story when he called me and he told me what happened. I Literally thought he was joking, but then he sent me the picture of the big ass bruise on his chest and the vest. And this can happen to any of us. Obviously, if you work law enforcement or private security, you're at a higher risk. But hi, people who like gun control, people who want gun control, all we want to do is defend ourselves. That's it. <laughs> Thank you.